Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on Control Panel Utility Part 1. Today we're going to discuss what the Control Panel is, and then we're going to discuss the Internet Options applet that is available from the Control Panel. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So let's start by discussing what the control panel is. It's a user interface that gives access to applets, small programs, that the user can use to adjust basic system settings. It can be a very handy tool with a knowledgeable tech. Have some problems that you need to get rid of? Look in the control panel and you'll probably find an answer. And with that, let's move on to the Internet Options applet. So what is the Internet Options applet? Well, it's used to control the default behavior of Internet Explorer. Once you open it, you'll find that there are seven tabs. So let's go through those tabs. We're going to start with the General tab. It sets the general behavior of Internet Explorer. From here, you can set the home page or you can see what home page has been set. From the startup setting, you get to decide where Internet Explorer begins, either from the home page or from the last session. The tabs section allows the user to modify some behavior of how tab pages and pop-ups behave. The section on browsing history allows some control over cookies and history. You can set it so that Internet Explorer deletes the browsing history when it closes, or you can manually delete the caches from here. From the Appearance section, some modifications can be made to how web pages appear. Some versions of the Internet Options applet do have a section where you can set the default search engine. This version did not have that. Now let's look at the Security tab. From here, you can reduce your risk through the use of zones. In the zones, you'll find different settings. There is Internet, which is the default for Internet web pages. Then there's Local Internet. That's the default setting for an intranet, or local network. Then there are Trusted Sites. Those are user-identified sites that can be granted more privileges than Internet sites. It's more relaxed security. Then there are restricted sites. These are user-identified sites that have more restrictions placed on them. They can still be visited, but what the web pages are allowed to do is greatly reduced. You can set custom levels for each zone. Internet Explorer allows the user to modify all of the default behavior. Caution should be used. Make sure you understand the ramifications before changing the default setting. Now let's move on to privacy. The Privacy tab allows some control over online privacy. The Settings section allows some control over how Internet Explorer handles cookies. The settings range from accept all cookies to block all cookies with various options in between. The Location section either allows or disallows a website from determining your physical location through your IP address. The pop-up blocker can either be on or off. If the pop-up blocker is turned on, the settings under this heading allow the user to manage which sites are allowed to use pop-ups. The In Private section. By default, when the user engages the Internet Explorer In Private browser function, Internet Explorer disables the toolbars and extensions. This can be changed from here. Now let's move on to the Content tab. This tab is used to control what content is displayed and what data is kept. The Family Safety section, also known as Parental Control, is used to place restrictions on Internet usage for specific user accounts. Some versions of this utility have Content Advisor. This is used to place restrictions on what content is viewable in Internet Explorer. An administrator can enter a code to bypass this setting. The Certificates section is used to manage how and which security certificates Internet Explorer will accept. Internet Explorer can remember information used to fill out web forms and uses the autocomplete function to autocomplete forms for the user. The behavior for this can be adjusted from here. The Feeds and Web Slices section is used to adjust how Internet Explorer 
controls and schedules RSS and web slices. Now let's move on to the connections tab. This controls how PCs connect to networks and there are several different sections under this tab. The setup button starts a wizard that will help to establish an internet connection. Under the dial-up and virtual private network setting, you can add a dial-up connection or a VPN from here. The local area LAN settings button can control how a PC connects to the LAN and the use of a proxy server can be enabled from the LAN's setting button. Now let's discuss the Programs tab. This sets how Internet Explorer handles certain situations and extensions. Now most applications use the proper defaults, but in certain situations they may need to be reset to a user's preference. The Manage Add-on section allows the user to modify how extensions operate in Internet Explorer. If you wish to view the, the coding for a web page or to edit a web, web page, the HTML default editor can be set from this section. The last tab is the Advanced tab. This allows for advanced control over Internet Explorer options. You need to be sure of the ramifications before changing defaults here. Internet Explorer security can be greatly reduced or enhanced by making adjustments here. Now that concludes this session on Control Panel Utilities. We briefly discussed what the control panel is, and then we went into a fairly in-depth discussion on the Internet Options applet that's available in the control panel. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure we will do it again soon.